Hello again, welcome back everyone. Liquor Hound here with you. Thank you for joining me once again for another spirit review video. And today we've got a very special bottle to review. It's the latest release coming out of Buffalo Trace, the Weller Foolproof Bourbon. Now, of course, it's the Wheater Bourbon, just like all the rest of the Weller line and the Pappy Van Winkle line for that matter. Uh, but the Weller Foolproof, the reason it gets its name is because it is bottled at full entry proof, meaning 114 proof. Um, basically, to break that down, what they're saying is when they're filling those barrels coming off with the fresh distillate, they're going to bring that distillate down to 114 proof and then fill the barrel. And then as the barrel matures up, the barrel is going to condense kind of flavors. It's going to start doing the angel share, evaporating the water out of the barrel, condensing that alcohol, and thus raising the proof in the barrel. That's how come you see a lot of William LaRue's, George T. Staggs coming out 120 proof plus because they have condensed that much and just uh, raised the alcohol level. So in this case, they take those barrels after about six to seven years because it is no age statement, but it's roughly the same as Weller 107. Uh, but they take those barrels, uh, blend them together, and of course the blend is still, still going to be at 120, 130-ish proof more than likely. And so they're going to bring it down with water, but they're not going to bring it all the way down to 107. They're just going to bring it right back down to the entry proof, 114, and that's what we have right here. Now, retail pricing on the Weller Full Proof is going to be $50. Of course, just like a lot of Wellers these days, we'll be very fortunate to be able to find it at that. You know, most uh, stores, especially small stores, will tend to want to raise the value increase the price just to kind of match what they're going for on secondary unfortunately which for this bottle i've been seeing at auction for about 350 400 dollars right there so um i don't recommend buying bottles at that price but if you're really in the market for a wheat or bourbon your options are going to be pretty limited and for that price it's actually not a bad deal considering the proof um Compared, especially when you're talking about the Pappy Van Winkle line, which goes for much more, uh, but probably is not going to beat this one. This one is very, very solid. Doesn't have as much oak as the 20 and the 23 and so on, or the Prestige by far. But as for being a solid bourbon, I'm going to go ahead and give you a little spoiler. I'm very impressed with this bourbon. Now, you may be asking, why do I have its siblings up here? You know, some of these siblings are the big William LaRue Weller here from 2008 and so on but the reason i have them up here is because the other day when i was tasting and sharing with friends i started wondering to myself how does this compare to some of the other great weller bottlings and i happen to have these open so that's why i have them up here and i'm actually going to do the same thing i did on my amaranth the eh taylor amaranth review that i did on youtube a few weeks back uh, where after that i go to my patreon channel and i'm going to compare it to all the others all right we're going to see where it ranks and that's what I'm going to do with this Weller Foolproof. So if you can, uh, join me over at my Patreon channel, patreon.com slash liquorhound. And for only $5, you can become a supporter of mine. Help me continue funding purchases like this for bottles to review. And we're going to have a good time trying to taste and put little notes on everybody and just picking out who the champ is. And as far as the players, again, I have this 2008 William LaRue. I've got a Weller store pick, one of my favorite little store picks here. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to compare and see if I want to do this one or this other little pick that's really solid. And then I have a paper label 107 from 1999. This William LaRue Weller, uh, W.L. Weller, sorry, 10-year centennial from the Burbage Heritage Collection from the mid-90s. This is Stetzel Weller, 10-year-old, bottled at 100 proof. And we have a Weller 12-year from, I think this is last year's release. And a Weller Special Reserve 7-year age dated. This one was from 2005, so mid-2000s there. We're going to compare all those. But for this video today, the one thing we're going to do is we're going to give you all my detailed tasting notes on this Weller Foolproof. And I've already told you how it got its name, so now we're going to get to the good part and nose it and taste it. Oh my goodness, yep, this one's big. Uh, big brown sugar caramel sweetness layering underneath that almost gives you a molasses tone on the nose it's very very deep cinnamon nut no nah, not nutmeg cinnamon and clove with a little bit of dried orange peels are the spice components mixed berries so anytime i say mixed berries it's talking about taking maybe cherries raspberries um uh, maybe a few strawberries and you could throw in some 
uh, probably some blueberries and like condensing them, cooking them down with a little sugar. You start combining the flavors. It gets really hard to pick out one particular. That's kind of what I'm getting in this. Just mix berries. Oof, there we go. Yeah, mixed berries, a little bit of a baked apple tone, which is kind of neat, and this that goes really well with that uh, mulling spice, the dried orange peels, and the cinnamon, because it is cinnamon is the most dominant spice in here. That goes really well together. Almost gives you, you can almost get that graham cracker crust rolling when you think about it there. But you start getting the, after you get past the cinnamon, I can start picking up the dark cocoa, dark chocolate tone. A pretty rich leather and a good amount of oak and I'm searching on that rim because a lot of times Weller is going to give you tobacco no, I'm not. maybe a little twinge of tobacco on the nose but anytime you can pick it up a little bit even a little bit on the nose it's probably gonna be more dominant on the palate we'll see about that all right now I will say at 114 proof I was able to get pretty uh, far into the glass, of course, I always tell everyone, make sure you part your lips, breathe through your mouth and nose at the same time. Helps cut that alcohol, helps you be able to pick out a few more notes. Okay, here we go, on the taste. Come on. That one goes boom right there. Wow, yeah. Big big classic bourbon profile just rushes in with that big brown sugar punch almost again almost like a little molasses mixed in there yeah i would go with that brown sugar molasses a little caramel just to sweeten things up then you start noticing those mixed berries that baked apple tone and then it just starts baked apples underneath the mixed berries by the way and then it starts rushing up hill with the uh spice and you start getting that dried orange peel you start getting that clove pretty big clove uh, and a little brighter cinnamon right there now the one thing I will say about this one and I'm still chewing on them what I like to feel I almost feel like it it does two things at once see a lot of times a bourbon will enter and then you'll get maybe that bourbon swell and then it'll start to taper uh, but the base kind of remains the same whether it's some caramel or brown sugar base a lot of times that remains and then you get a lot of action up on top for this one, I'm almost feeling like it enters very big brown sugar, lots of flavors, mixed berries, um, that baked apple thing. Then as the spices start to come in, those dried orange peels, the clove and cinnamon start swelling, I start noticing the bottom fall out of it. And you start picking up cocoa powder, and it starts feeling like it's just dropping. You're getting out, you're starting to get leather, old leather. And then at the very bottom, you run into rich oak, and then the tobacco on the finish. Like right about here is where I'm starting to really start chewing on the tobacco um, but you start noticing those deep flavors rushing downward as you're getting that swell of spice and then everybody just kind of falls down right behind it it's quite the ride i'll say that this has a huge impactful bourbon right here i'm gonna say it's not the most complex but maybe that's part of the beauty of this bourbon is that you don't have to overthink it. It kind of just presents everything to you. And if you like high proof bourbons, this is going to be right up your alley because it is bold and then you get that big drop of flavor. It's quite, quite the ride. Now, the one thing we're going to do is add a little water here because I know not everyone likes, um, not everyone likes uh, high proof bourbon. So maybe you bought this bottle and you, you know it's a little too warm for you. It's okay, you can add some water, see what you think. Matter of fact, that was about 12 drops. I'm going to go ahead and go to 15 for that amount in that glass. Of course, when you first add water to any bourbon, I've said this many a time, you got to let it sit a little bit. Because when that water is um, re-engaging, re it's basically cracking those molecules open again, uh, you start getting a lot of notes jumping out immediately. And they're going to be the spice components going to jump, and the oak or the tannins are going to jump right out of the glass. So you have to give those a lot of time to settle back down, usually a minute to five minutes. And you'll notice if you first add water, you taste it, you're going to be like, whoa, it's really hot. and Oh, man, it's really drying on the palate. You just have to give that time. Let it see if it's going to settle out. Sometimes it will. I'd say the majority of the time it does. Sometimes it won't. But we're going to see about this one. 
And I always like it because a lot of times, for the research purpose, you want to see what else is going to change. You know, are the fruits going to soften? Are they going to, some other fruit going to emerge? So we're going to see. And I'm going to rush it a little bit here. But we're going to check it now. Ooh, got to more caramel. It got sweeter. A little less brown sugar. Spice cinnamon still kicking in the glass now, so hopefully blow that out there. I'm hoping that'll calm down. I'd say the mixed berries feel a little bit brighter. Dried apples feel about the same. Sorry, not dried apples. The baked apples feel about the same. And everybody else, I still get everybody else. The cocoa powder, the leather, all that's still in there. But the spice seems subdued. Maybe the fruits seem a little brighter. And the sweetness up front seems a little bit uh, brighter as well. All right, let's try it. Still medium, just above medium viscosity. It's still pretty oily. Handled that water well there. Okay. All right. Still like it because it still gives you a little bit of everything that the, the without water gave you. It just seems a little more easy going. Like it enters, you get the brown sugar and then you get that sweet caramel. You start to get the spice swell, but it doesn't get too warm. You know, it just kind of warms up a little bit. And then you start noticing the cocoa powder and the leather and all those things are in there, but everybody's just a little bit easier going. It's almost like, it's almost like this is the kiddie ride version, okay? So nobody's going to get too scared with this one. It's going to do pretty much some of the things that the big one does, but, you know, it's just easier going, and that's pretty much what this is. I don't have a problem with it. I still like it. Um, a matter of fact, if it was after dinner or something, I might just put a little water on it every now and then just to... Help it help me relax even more here. But overall, really, really solid bourbon. I mean, to me, if you were to put this bottle uh, in the dictionary under bourbon, it would be a great picture because to me that is classic bourbon profile. It's not doing anything fancy. It's not getting overly complex. No, no crazy finishes or anything like that. It's just what you'd expect. Anyway, I hope you just enjoyed this video. Uh, of course, again, join me over at patreon.com slash liquorhound uh, for the full review of it and all the others and kind of comparative review. And thank y'all for watching. Keep leaving all those great comments. I really do appreciate it. Everybody have a great day and cheers.